I'm Drew Thomas, True Drew, and this is You Are Here Part 1, The Code. I'm going to go through this and just explain it piece by piece to a non-coder so you can get a sense of what goes into generative art and what goes into this type of code. This is written in P5.js. That's a library that helps you make generative art. So it's not exactly standard JavaScript, but essentially, in case you're curious, this is all JavaScript. Let's get started. So for a little background, the way this works is when you mint a new piece of artwork, it's gonna run through this code and output the final artwork. That way each one is different. But how are they different? It's based on the actual transaction that occurs when you mint. Every transaction has a hash. It's a long string of letters and numbers. That random string of letters and numbers will ultimately dictate your final output. We start off at the top and I declare a bunch of variables. But if you look closely, you can see these are the things that are gonna ultimately make up our final output. So we've got grid, we've got total layers, something I call chaos factor, stroke width, background color. I'm just setting up a few properties. Now, if we go down a little bit, I'm setting up more things for the instructions. When you press I, you can download instructions to recreate this artwork. None of that's important for right now. Basically understand I'm setting up some variables here because I'm using the prohibition platform, they're gonna give me this hash and invocation. The hash is what I was just referring to, and that's that unique string of letters and numbers that you got when you minted. And invocation is actually your token ID. But again, you don't need to know that. All you need to know is that right here, I'm declaring some of those values so I can use them in a second. Now we get into the meat of it. In P5.js, you get a function called setup. So that's something built into their library and you use it and this is where you set up a, a number of things. What I'm doing in this case, I'm creating the canvas. I'm making my artwork area and it's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels and pixel density too. So actually it's, it's bigger than that. Here I set color mode, but that's not as important. And actually I'm gonna skip all the non-important things going forward. So this is important because this is the crux of how all generative art is made. Here we take R, so I have a variable I declared up here called R. Here I make it a new random. Now what this is, is I have a class at the bottom of this code called random, which was given by prohibition, by the platform. And what it does is it takes the hash, that token hash, the unique value, and runs it through its own version of random and gives you random numbers. In JavaScript, you have a default random generator where you can generate any number or any random number. If you use that in generative art, every time you looked at your token, every time you looked at your artwork, it would be completely different. This is a way to standardize that where you get a random output, but it's the same random output every time. And again, the way they do that is based on that seed or that token hash. So that out of the way, here we're gonna set the things that are gonna ultimately create the artwork. So grid, I get a random number between three and 11. Actually, that's the values will be between three and 10. Total number of layers, we get a random value. Chaos factor, we get a random value. Stroke width, a random number. All the way down, here we do colorway, which is the background color basically. And what I'm doing is I take a random number one to seven, and then if it equals one, it's white background. If it's two, it's a blue background. If it's three, it's an orange background. If it's four, it's a green, and on and on. That's how we determine the background color. Then I've got something called here cell. So in the artwork, there's one small segment of the line somewhere is highlighted. That's, I call it the here line because you are here. So here cell is which cell in the grid, the here should appear. So I just set a random number based on the grid size that I get from a variable above. Here I'm actually taking a random value, which is gonna decide if the piece is signed and signed in air quotes because it's not actually signed. It's like a digital, it's part of the artwork. There's a low chance we get a random number between zero and one. And then we say if that number is greater than 0.9. So there's a low chance, but a chance that we're gonna get a signature on our piece. Then we come down, these are for some of the overlays, some of the color overlays that happen. And then we set up a few random values for our grid. That's basically gonna say, if you have an eight by eight grid, your artwork's gonna have eight by eight, so 64 squares. And inside of each square, it's either gonna be a circle, a diagonal line one way, a diagonal line another way, or a specific random shape. And and this grid here is gonna set up a random value for every cell in your grid and, and that's what chooses what kind of shape you get in that, in that grid. Here, we actually draw the random shape. So every artwork gets one random shape and then there's a chance that that random shape is gonna get used as it's repeating through the grid. So in this case, what we do is we take five points. So five random points for X, five random points for Y. And if you can imagine on a grid, the X and Y coordinates, then we just create a shape where we join them together. We start at the top left, we draw a line to point one, then to point two, then to point three, then to point four, then to point five. And then we finish it in the bottom right. 
Here we have some JSON instructions. This is a way, I'm not gonna go through these, but this is the way as we're building all this stuff in the code, we're also creating a big long JSON array of all this information so that when you're viewing the artwork, you press I and you can download that JSON, which include full instructions to recreate your artwork. Here's a cool small note. I left this code and this code, which is commented out, which means it doesn't do anything, which means that I paid money to put it on the blockchain, but it doesn't do anything. Reason I left it in is I had a really special day with my son one day, he's also an artist, he's seven, and he really wanted me to do a rainbow background with gold as like a super rare option. We started implementing it. We even went through, did the gradient code together, um, started on the gold, but ultimately I didn't have enough time to work it into the, the project and I didn't include it in the final, but, I I wanted to include it in the code as a little bit of a, a nod to him, his vision in that day. So next we're out of the setup. That was all set up. We set up all these different properties, gave everything random values. We have that kind of stored in our code. And as we're running through, we come to this draw function. What P5JS does is it loops through the draw function continuously until you tell it to stop. In my case, we'll check the current layer and the total layer as it's drawing each layer. And in the phase where it's drawing, it's gonna draw. And then in the final layer, it's gonna do a few other things. So that's what this is. It's checking, it says, if current layer is greater than the total layers, which means that it's done, basically, that it's created all the artwork it needs to create and it's gonna do a few more things and then stop looping. Or if it's not, if the current layer is not greater than total layers, we're gonna run a function I call draw layer and then we're gonna increment that current layer. So I'll get to the draw layer in a second because that's what's actually drawing the grid. But before we get to it, there is a quick one here called key types, which is another P5JS thing. This is what allows me to say, if you press I, save the instructions. If you press S, save a PNG. Next is draw layer. Layer. So this is what's actually gonna draw one layer of your grid. So if you have an eight by eight grid, that's 64 cells, this draw layer is gonna draw those 64 cells with a few interesting randomness in there. If you have seven total layers, that means it's gonna call this draw layer function seven times. Each time it calls it, it's gonna do the same exact grid design, but because of that chaos factor and some other things, you're gonna get variations in each layer. So first we set some offset values. These are based on that chaos factor trait and they're gonna basically print that same layer, but maybe it's off to the left and bottom a little or off to the top and right, or maybe it's perfectly aligned. Next, we're gonna set some colors the colors for the stroke, make it rounded on the end, set the width of the stroke. Layer instructions are for those JSON instructions, so we can skip that. And then we start here looping through the grid. So I just set up a few variables to kind of track where we are in the grid. And then this is a call to for loop. This will loop through the grid and do something for each cell. None of this is important to talk about here. Once we get down here, this is where we actually get into the layers. So actually before the layer starts, we're gonna check if it's that here cell and do a few special things. But in general, it's gonna get to this point where we say, should we print this cell or not? If it's the first layer, it prints every cell. That way you get to see your shape. But then for each subsequent layer, it has a choice of whether it's gonna print that cell or not. And it's actually kind of a slim chance. It's a random number zero to one, and we only do it if it's greater than 0.9. What it's gonna do then is it's gonna look, if you remember there was an original grid array that sets what shape is inside of each grid, it's gonna look to the grid array and then this cell, and then it's gonna do a few things. So there's a 10% chance you get a circle. Then if not, a chance will get a line. Inside of the line, there's a chance it's one way or the other way. And then if not the line, there's a chance you get a shape for that cell. And so inside of these, it's doing a bunch of different things. And ultimately it's gonna draw a line or not draw a line. And it may draw a line that's a highlight color if it's the here cell. Now if we keep going down, all that's left is the actual functions that are doing things. The function that'll draw the shape. Here's that color overlay, keep going down. Here's the signatures. And I actually took, I actually drew, wrote my signature, then did a separate signature for true drew, which I've never done before. And then converted those SVGs in it's a P5JS code here like this. So this looks a little crazy, but these numbers are creating the signature. And then it finishes with that random class the prohibition gave me, which I referenced in the beginning of this video, which at this point was a long time ago. So if I didn't lose you, thanks for watching. I hope you kind of learned something. I didn't really aim to teach code, just more to show what goes into code and how it works and, and what it means. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy the artwork. Thanks for watching.